everyone, it's Minutia Minute. This week I wanted to talk to you guys about a DC graphic novel from 2020 that I read this week. Uh, it's something a little bit more off the beaten path for me, and that is Primer. This is a digest-sized um, DC graphic novel for kids, and I picked it up this week kind of on a whim. So this is a book that I first became familiar with uh, just in passing, it had been mentioned in a few other videos that I had seen online. It was referred to as a graphic novel for kids and was considered to be pretty good. I assumed, knowing nothing about it, the title being Primer, that it was like some kind of a kids how to read comic books kind of a book. And so I didn't really think that much about it, went on about my day. Then I was on Amazon, clicking around, uh, looking for different Superman books, and I clicked on Superman Blue which right now on Amazon is $14.99. Uh, and I was scrolling down and saw that it was listed as like the 2,500th some odd best-selling DC graphic novel of the week, which made me chuckle because why that's tracked at all, I will never know. Um, but my curiosity was piqued, so I clicked on it uh, just to see, well, what are the best-selling DC graphic novels right now? And as I'm scrolling down, it's like, okay, Batman, 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 Batman. Uh, even if it's, you know, not literally a Batman book, Batman is featured prominently on the cover. I'll be the first to admit that I am a large part of the reason why DC publishes nothing but Batman books. I apologize to those of you guys who like some variety in your comic books. But then right in the middle of all these Dark Tower Batman books, there was this. A bright, colorful DC kids book, and lo and behold, it was Primer. And I saw, you know, the paint scheme and how she's got, you know, she's covered in paints and she's like some kind of graffiti artist. And I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. So it's like a book that's a primer for reading comics because it's for kids, but the character's name is also Primer because she has some kind of paints ability. And at surface value, I just thought, hey, that's kind of cool. This, you know, title has multiple meanings kind of a neat concept, and I also thought, just based on the cover, like, the art and the coloring was actually kind of intriguing. So, on a whim, I ordered it. So it showed up on my porch a few days ago, and finally I sat down and read it last night, and I have to say that this was not only a good book, this was the best DC book that I've read since I've been doing videos and digging back into comic books again. Now let me just address the elephant in the room right away. Obviously, this is a kid's book. And uh, there's a certain amount of kid logic to the storytelling. Uh, certain things happen that, you know, it feels a little bit axe cop at times where it's like, it doesn't make human sense, but like from a kid's perspective, looking at the world a little bit more two-dimensionally with not quite as much life experience, it kind of makes sense on that level. Um, but at the end of the day, like when you take the package as a whole, you know, it's intended for kids in the same way that, like, a Pixar movie is intended for kids. Like, it's really an all-ages story that anyone can hop in and appreciate. And if you're not inclined to believe me, this book's been out for, like, a year, and it's still outselling all the DC Evergreen books, like The Watchmen's, The Killing Jokes, like, all that kind of stuff. So assuming that I've gotten you guys past the stigma of children's book, uh, when you pick this book up, you're going to find that it's about Ashley. Ashley is somewhat of a delinquent. She's been bouncing from foster home to foster home. Her father's in prison. I don't think we know what happened to her mother. Fairly early in the novel, she finds her way into a foster home that she kind of feels at home in because uh, the people who are her parents seem kind of like misfits. She kind of relates to them. Uh, it's kind of similar to the Shazam movie. If you, re if you remember the Shazam movie from a couple years ago, like it definitely follows that kind of story structure. The story has a lot of really original ideas, and I think it was smart to use kind of a pretty straightforward story to hang those ideas on so you could really focus on the creative things you're bringing to the book. So what you find out is Ashley's foster mom is working for the Department of Defense, and she's developed 33 different body paints, which when you apply these paints to your body, it gives you a different superpower. You can apply any three paints at any given time, and you get those three superpowers. And the paints are made from like blood and spit and snot of actual superheroes out in the world, and that's how she was able to develop these, which is kind of a funny touch. After developing these paints, she ends up stealing them from the government to keep them out of nefarious hands, and they wind up back at the foster home 
where Ashley finds them and starts using them. Now, just as a concept for a superhero, I thought that this was a brilliant idea for a lot of different reasons. First of all, it's simple. Anyone can understand how this works, and the idea that she can kind of swap in, swap out powers, and basically turn herself into several thousand different versions of a superhero, depending on which powers she needs to use, was really, really clever. And because those superpowers are expressed through whatever the three different body paints she has that she's wearing, it provides the opportunity for the artist to really come to the forefront and tell the story through the coloring, rather than through extra dialogue. Like, you can get a visual cue of what her powers are based on what color she is, which is kind of a neat concept. And at the end of the day, again, it's super simple, easy to understand. Um, as I was reading this book, it actually gave me flashes to like Silver Age Superman quite a bit. Just because, you know, any of the great superheroes that we know and love today all started with a very simple concept that was easy to understand and only over the course of 80 years has it been bogged down by complications and confusion and solar power from the sun, etc, etc. Whereas Primer, it's brand new, there's no baggage, you can just sit down and read the book, uh, and it can just tell a fun story with just basic superpowers without having to complicate things, which was just very, very refreshing. And they did such a good job in this book just setting the parameters of how the powers worked, what the limitations were, and they're able to play with those rules throughout the book. Mild spoiler warning, but as you get towards the end of the book, she's fighting someone else who has a similar power set, and she's able to defeat them using the limitations of the paints that you've learned about earlier in the book, which really tied the story in a nice bow. I also thought Ashley herself had a lot of dimensionality to her as a character. She's not just the foster child that doesn't get along with anybody. Like, you get to see her dynamic with her father who's in jail. Uh, you get some flashbacks, some actually surprisingly dark flashbacks, to her as a kid when she was still living with her father um, that really elucidates like her mentality and like she's a very positive character but she's not positive because nothing's ever gone wrong she's positive because she's lived through difficult life experiences and has chosen to be that way which made her optimism in the book a lot more powerful to me now no good superhero book is complete without great art i thought that greta lusky did an amazing job with the art in this it's cartoony and stylized but in a way that really brings out the expressiveness of the characters makes them super relatable um, and it's really not just the line drawing, it's really the one-two punch of the line drawing and the coloring combined, which is bright, colorful, fits the tone of the story, but also supports the narrative itself, which is a neat touch. So in my last DC Comics review that I did, I complained a lot about DC's pricing. Um, there's no doubt about it, they are pushing us as hard as they can to get every dollar out of the hardcore DC fans that they can. Um, just this week, I went to pick up my copy of Batman, and the shop was out of the regular cover, and they had stacks and stacks of the thicker cardstock cover that cost a dollar more. So I know DC has come out and said, well, you know, we're, that was a mistake, we're only going to be charging $4.99, we're not going to be bumping the price up another dollar. They're still shoehorning you into having to buy the $5.99 book. It's basically the equivalent of when you go to the movie theater and the 2D showings are all sold out because no one cares about the 3D. So they get into the cheaper show, and then you're just stuck with a bunch of 3D shows at the end of the day, and you end up paying more anyway. It's exactly the same strategy. So even though they're quote-unquote not doing it, the reality is they are doing it. And one of the really cool things about Primer is this was like 150 or 160 pages, full color art, digest size, but a ton of comic book for only $9.99. Now, to put that into perspective, Batman Urban Legends, which came out about a month ago now, uh, issue one, it's got a bunch of different stories, but none of them are even full length. Some of them are 15 pages, some of them are 8 pages, and it's only $2 cheaper at $7.99. So for $2 more, you can just pick up Primer, get a full, complete story with great art, great coloring, great overall package, and it's just a no-brainer. I think that when DC's thinking about, you know, value for money and how do we get people interested in comics, like the reality is, I definitely think that there's some lessons to be learned from this book. Um, and I think that the more manga-centric, western-style comic book is what future generations are going to be more interested in. And it's going to be just interesting to see how it plays out. 
This book definitely made me interested in some of the other DC kids graphic novels. None of the ads I've seen have particularly caught my eye, but I will definitely be keeping an eye open to see what else they do. Uh, and hopefully they do more primer because this book was absolutely great and I would highly recommend you guys go pick it up. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, hope you guys had a good week at comics. Catch you guys soon.